we spoke the other day about the Kawasaki Z650 and how I'm going to set the carbs up on it. Um, one of the main things about setting a carburetor up, or a set of carburetor, is getting the fuel levels right. And why does that matter? You, you'll hear people talk about fuel levels a lot, but what does it mean? Um, here's a carb off a different bike, but the principle is exactly the same. This is off an old Honda CL450. Um, there's a float bowl. Inside that piece of the carburetor there is a tube with a load of holes in it and what it does essentially that tube sits in the fuel in the carburetor and as the air passes through the carburetor through there um, there's a narrowing in the carburetor that causes the air to speed up as it passes through and that creates a depression in the carburetor which causes fuel to be drawn up that's not strictly true atmospheric pressure is acting on the fuel but for the purposes of this we'll call it sucking. Um, it essentially it sucks the fuel up uh, through the, the emulsion tube and the holes in that emulsion tube cause an emulsion, a vapour of air and fuel to be drawn into the carburetor. If that fuel level is too low your mixture will be lean, if it's too high your mixture will be too rich and you can screw about with the mixture screw all day, you're never going to get it right if that uh, fuel level's not correct. So. It's a really, really critical starting point of carburetion, setting the fuel uh, level up in the, in the blows. Okay, here ended the lesson. Let's go into the practicalities now. With these types of carburetor, uh, with a, this has got an old brass float because this is off a CL450 from about 1970. You bend that little tang that sits on the needle valve in there, which is like, like the float in your in your toilet system. You know, as it right as it falls, you know, opens the valve and lets the fuel in exactly the same principle here as that falls it lets the fuel in but on these Kawasaki carburetors it's slightly different in that you put a little level pipe onto that part of the carburetor float bowl onto the drain plug and that should the fuel level should be level with a wee mark I've just described on the um, float bowl there so hang on let's switch that one and I can show you and the mark I've scribed on each end of the float bowl is there. And there. And you can see the level tube there. So when I switch this fuel on in a moment, and I'll hold that against the side of the carburetor there, and you should see, once the carbs are filled, they should fill to about that level, plus or minus one mil. That's three mils below the carburetor, uh, that face level to there. And I scribed it on with my vernier caliper, which I've had for about 40 years. Everyone uses uh, metric ones, sorry, uh, digital ones now, but I've had that a long time and it's an old friend. Okay, this gets a bit messy. So I've got my trusty washing up bowl below there. So let's fill the carbs up and see what happens. See where this one ends up. You can see the fuel rising there. The carburetor, I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. And that one is actually miles low. It's a way down there on the carburetor. So, I will mark number four as being low. And then I'll move Oh no, it's come up now. In fact, <laughs> it's exactly right. Let me just show you here. Hope you can see that. That is exactly where I would hope it would be when I hold the carbs level. Hope you can see that. That's great. So I know one of them's right. So I'm going to move along the carburetor bank now. And this is where it gets messy. So I'll switch the fuel back off. I've got my trusty washing up bowl. Because now I'm going to have to drain. Hold it over there. Take that drain out. Take that out of the drain. Pop the actual drain back in. Which I've got somewhere here. I'll, just, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll nick the drain out of that for the time being. And we'll put that back in there. And I'll now put the level pipe in. That one, and let's do it again. Okay, once again, 
let's just up. So we mean about it getting messy. Let's put that back on there. Put that back under there, and then we can use the same level on that carburetor for the one further along. Because gravity works just the same on both. Right, put the fuel back on, and let's see how that one comes out. Blimey. That one is exactly right as well. This is most unusual. I'm sure one of them is going to be out. And I can demonstrate how to rectify that. This can be a hell of a faff. As you can see, you end up with a lot of fuel lying about, unless you've got four, four of these um, little level pipes, which I don't. I mean about it getting messy. I usually like to wear gloves when I'm working on the bike just to stop your hands getting full of crap, but really, once we, if we do have to start taking the, the float bowls off and tweaking the floats, it just gets a bit too fiddly to be um, to wearing gloves. So I've got a similar scribe mark on this end of the carburetor bank. So let's once again switch our fuel on and see where it ends up. I'll turn it around to face that carburetor, that uh, camera. Okay, switch on the bongo. And hold it we go. Okay, that one is definitely low. That is showing about No further down. No, it's not. They're all, they're all making me a liar today. That is once again. It's maybe a tiny touch high. It's about level like that. It's about halfway up there, which is within the, the one mil tolerance. So once again, we're looking good. This is not what I was expecting. Okay, last one, let's put the fuel on and see where we end up. Unbelievably, that's within the, the realms of, of within being about a mil out. There's maybe a tiny touch high.
it is in fact a tiny touch high so I will adjust that one and just take it down a tiny bit and this is where it gets messy now so we'll pop that we'll drain the car we have to drain the whole bank and we'll take this off take the float ball off is on with two screws each because I suspect that I'd need to do this. But actually that's really quite a good result. These are the ones I've had in my cleaner. So I want to clean it for this bike. Okay, so I'm going to pop that float out. This is one that had a bit of a gash um, float pin in it. Watch the needle valve doesn't fall out. Okay, to get that float level to drop, I need to bend this tang here. There, that tang very slightly up, and that will cause the float level to be down just to drop a little bit, so I'll just pop a couple of screwdrivers in here, one there, and one there, and just ease that very gently. And I think that should suffice, if anything maybe a, bit, a little bit too much, so I'll just pop the float back on, and let's see what happens. Okay, float ball back on. Let's just see what happens now. Just hold that level, switch the fuel back on, and let's see wherever it leaves us. A bit air bubble there, so let's just let, let that work its way out. Come on. And there we are, that's right on the money there. I hope you can see that. I'll just show you. I don't know if you can see the, the fuel level, but it is right on the money where it should be. So, I've got a wee result there. So, I can pop these carbs back on the bike now. I'll put the screws back in uh, and the rest of the floats, float bowls. And we've got a, we've got a wee result there. Um, I was hoping that was going to be a bit more difficult. Oh, I wasn't really, you know what I mean. It would have been more useful to you guys if it had been a bit more uh, testing. However, we've got a result there. I've got another set of carbs here which uh, I'll have a look at later. And if they're more problematic, we'll go through those together as well. But what gonna... Okay, I've got the carbs back on this bike now. I've cleaned the plugs and we're going to sync up the carbs now, assuming the thing will start. Uh, I've got a fuel supply here, not that much in it, I might need to put some more in in a moment. But let's see if it starts and let's see where the VAT gauges are. Um, once it runs, we set it up to spin at a fast idle, which is about 2000 revs, then we can adjust it there and sync them together. So, let's have a go.
out. And we're almost certain that it comes out anyway. And you can see when I lower, when I screw out the, uh, I've got those screws. Up now. The mixtures are set just loosely, just roughly, when I built the carbs. So let's adjust them up now and get the carbs running. Really get, get it running really smoothly. You just start to fall to there, so I'll rip it back up again. Leaning it off now by screwing it in. Start the fault in a moment. There it goes. You lift it back in again. You better get some more fuel in it. This one hasn't actually showed us that much because the fuel levels were about right when we started and the carbs were not a mile out of sync. So uh, that's really quite unusual. So when I build up the other one within a couple of days, I'll have a look at those as well. And um, you see that's it. This just went straight up.
in there. See that one just come up a little bit there. Yeah. So bring that one back down again. Okay, that'll do. I'll live with that. Um, I will adjust the carburetors again when I've got the um, the air filters in. Uh, yeah, these little rubbers in and the air, air, air cleaner on. So that will affect the carburetion somewhat. But at least the vacuums are right now. And uh, we know it runs sweet. So I think that's a great result. So thanks guys for that. And we'll talk very soon.